So we're here, we're in our um, uh, series that is preparing us for Easter, coming in two weeks. And we want to talk about what's coming, although we all know what's coming because we celebrate it every year. But I think sometimes we forget what we're celebrating. And so it's good to remind ourselves. And those of you who know me, you know that I love the basics. I love the foundations. Because I believe that if we are all right with the foundations, the rest will be fine. The problem starts when we start building the house from the roof. That's never working. I don't know, but I think that might not work well. <clears throat> I'm an engineer, so I should know that. Um, okay, so, uh, so we're talking about Easter and about what we're celebrating. And the title of this series is Strength in Weakness. Because so often, and I talked a little bit about it last week and today, Pastor Philip uh, during Polish services also was talking about it, that in our country, especially in Poland, because you're currently in the beautiful country of Poland, but you probably have noticed that. And in this country, especially the culture, teaches us that the time of preparation for Easter and the time of Easter is kind of sad. And I do understand the reflective kind of season before what happened, because crucifixion, uh, it was not a pleasant event. However, I think we're missing here one thing that is very, very important, that is crucial, that cross was not a defeat. And even though we do need to reflect, we do need to ponder on the things that happened, on what Jesus did for us on the cross, I still believe we should be rejoicing and celebrating because cross was victory. And this is what we want to talk about it. We want to talk about this thing that everything around describes as weakness and see that this actually was the strength. You know, we think Friday was a moment of defeat, but then Sunday came, now we can rejoice. You know, in Poland they have this, in some churches they have this special uh, service that is 6 a.m. in the morning, and then they, uh, they, they shoot something that make the noise similar to what could happen when the uh, stone was rolled away, and they wake up everybody around the churches uh, that don't want to go and celebrate that. But that is the moment when you can rejoice, you can now be happy. Well, the truth is, we can rejoice on Friday. We can still be happy on Friday because Jesus came for Friday. And because of Friday, there is Sunday. Because of the cross, there is empty tomb. If it wasn't for the cross, there wouldn't be an empty tomb. So this is what we want to celebrate. And in this victory that we have, there is so much. And I want to read to you something from the Bible. And I hope I will be able to read it because the print is really small. Yes, and I have uh, glasses that help to see the other way, so that might be a, a difficulty, but we'll see. We'll see what it gets us. And in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is talking to them, and he actually wants to explain how much has happened on the cross. And from verse 19, he says that in his... Com incom incomparably, incomparably, great word, incomparably great power for us who believe that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. That's the victory that was won on the cross. Yes, he died. But because he died, he rose again. And this is incredible. You know, we need to start seeing the cross as a place of victory. We need to see what happened on the cross, not as a defeat, but as the greatest victory in the history of humanity. Because of what happened on Friday, we're here today. Because of what happened on Friday, we now have access to God. We now have been freed to live life that God has planned for us. We now can 
Not only hope that maybe someday, one day, God will look at us and think, oh, yeah, I choose you. No, we have been bought by the precious blood of Christ. And we are seated with Him in the heavenly places. It's amazing. And yet, when you look around, especially here, sorry to be relating to Poland, but I'm Polish and you're in Poland, so it's kind of no-brainer. Uh, but if you look around, especially in Krakow, if you visit many places, many historical buildings, historical churches, the cross always has a Jesus crucified on. And this is what we see all year long. So it kind of makes people think that that's it. He was hanged there and that's it. But that's not true. The cross is empty and the grave is empty. Because he defeated death and sin and he has won. The cross is victory. But that victory was revealed in weakness. In something that we see as weakness. Because when you think of Christ who was led to the cross, who was beaten, mocked, spit at. Where the whole crowd was shouting, crucify him. Christ who did so many miracles who was hope for the people around him that he will restore the kingdom and yet he was brought to the cross that's weakness when we look at it we think that's weakness because this is what our world tell us tells us but you know i don't know if you realize that kingdom of god is an upside down kingdom Actually, we are in an upside down kingdom. I think this is the way we should be thinking. That kingdom is the right side up. We are in an upside down kingdom because we distort everything. But in his kingdom, that was not weakness. That was not defeat. That was the greatest victory in the human history. Devil was celebrating. He thought he won. But what he thought was his victory as a matter of fact, was the greatest step in God's plan for salvation. I stole it from you. You know, in 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing those powerful words. Oops. In 2 Corinthians 12, I love Paul. He's amazing. And I wish I could one day say like he's saying, you know, because... No longer I live, but Christ in me. For me, life is Christ. I think this is amazing. I want to be like Paul. And he says that there was something in his life that he three times asked God to remove it. He calls it a thorn in the flesh. And he was asking God to take it away. And yet, God's answer was, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And I think these are one of the most powerful words that we can read. You know, when you look at Jesus, when you look at him and you think of a weak human being, he was a man, he was a God, but he was a man. That was put on a cross, beaten, mocked, rejected. You think weakness. And God says, my power is made, made perfect in weakness. And we read just before in Ephesians that through Christ, through his death and resurrection, we have received the power. In another place, it's written that the, what people say that cross is foolishness. For many, the cross is foolishness. But for us, for us who have salvation, this is the power of God. And you know, we think so often that raised in the culture that tells you that you have to be self-made man, you have to be strong, you have to go through everything, you have to you know, persevere and everything. And yes, those things are good. But the truth is that God's power is made perfect in weakness. You know, the greatest victory in the history came in what was clothed in weakness but actually it was weakness in these guys and I want us to understand that in our own lives there are moments when we have to just be strong but in him 
And the truth is that when we come in His presence, no matter how weak you feel, no matter how lonely you feel, no matter how abandoned or rejected you may feel, He is enough. He is enough for you to walk you through the season of your life and actually to see you on the other side victorious. Because that's what happened. Jesus died on the cross, seemed weak to everybody, but he rose again on the third day. He was victorious. His power is made perfect in weakness. I love this. And the power was actually revealed because Jesus was obedient in his weakness, in what we see as a weakness. You know, when Jesus was in a Gethsemane, he asked three of his closest disciples to be there with him. And they fell asleep. Somebody counted in the time on someone and didn't happen, you know. Three times he was coming to them, waking them up, and they were falling asleep. But in the meantime, he was also crying out to his father. And it seemed that he also was quiet. Have you realized that he never got an answer? And what did he do? In this terrible situation of being abundant, left out, knowing what was going to happen, because he knew. He knew exactly what's going to happen. And yet, he stood up and went to do what he came for. If you want to see power of God in your life, don't be afraid to be weak before your God. Before so many people, we have to be strong. And life made us be strong. Because if you don't take care of yourself, no one will. But there is someone who actually wants you weak. Because he knows that when you come weak in his presence, when you're broken down, when you feel that you're rejected, that you are abandoned, that there is nothing going well, but you submit to him and you obey, you will see his power in a most amazing way. Because that's the promise. That's the promise. My power is made perfect in weakness. You know, there is a story in the Old Testament. Some of you might be familiar. It's the story of Gideon. And I think, I love this story. I love the, the story because of so many funny one-liners there. You know, you have the story of Gideon. So the scenery is Israelites again are being defeated, again are hiding, again are not where they should be, again they are rebelling against God, again it's not going well. And so he is, by night, hiding because he needs to do some work, but he cannot do it during the day because they will come and either kill him or steal whatever he was doing there. So he's doing it by night. And then the angel of God comes and says, mighty man of valor. So the guy is like, me? I love this. So then he's like, go, you're going to set your people free. Your God sending you. It's like. Excuse me, sir. If my God wants to save my people, then... And he starts. Have you ever done this to God? Anybody? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. But you know what? I love this. God is not offended, mad at him. It's not like me when my sons do the same with me. It's like, okay, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. No. He actually keeps encouraging him and is like, Go. And what he says, go in your strength. In your strength. Remember? And he before said, I'm the youngest from my family. My family is the smallest in my whole big tribe. The tribe is the weakest and the smallest, blah, 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 blah. Go in this might of yours. And you know why? Because then there is another answer for, again, another complaint. And he says, you will win. Because my presence will be with you. And then, when God sends him to defeat the army, 
he's kind of like, okay, I believe that you're sending me now, but I want to make sure. So, you know, he brings this fleece, yeah, and he just asks, okay, make this, then the other way around, and, you know, just, just to make sure. Anybody did that before with God? Again, God did not get mad at him. He was so patient. And sometimes we, we feel that either we complain so much that we cannot see that God is there waiting. It's kind of like, go, I'm sending you and I'm with you. And we stop there. We stop on complaining. Or if we go actually through the complaining part and go into the like, okay, maybe, maybe, just maybe you're going to send me and use me. Maybe. I know these guys are better, but maybe. But, but if you want to use me really, then please show me, you know. I need a sign. I need a sign to know. And, and then you confirm the sign. And maybe not just once, but maybe twice. And if you're like me, Lord, I want to have it in writing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, with a stamp, if you're Polish, with a stamp. And for sure two. And the best would be one red, at least. So, and you know, and then sometimes we stop there because we, we just can't believe that God might use us because we feel so weak. But despite all of that, God never got mad with Gideon. He never said like, okay, forget it, I'll go to find someone else. He was patient and waiting for him to finally decide, okay, I'll do it. But you know what's great about Gideon? When he finally decided to do it, he went full on. He was obedient. And I want to encourage you today to remember that God's power is made perfect in our weakness. And that power will be revealed through our obedience. Just like Jesus was obedient in the garden, he was obedient. And in Philippians, we can read that he was obedient to de death and to death on the cross. The same is with us. If we are obedient, if we will be strong enough in this weakness to get over ourselves, our complaints, our unbelief, and our doubts, then we'll see his power made perfect in our lives. And we'll see when all the promises that Christ won for us in cross fulfilled in our lives. I don't know about you, but yeah, I, yeah, that's Polish or German, depending what you want to say. I want to see the goodness of the Lord in my time in the land I'm living in. I want to see people being saved. I want to see people being healed. I want to see miracles. I want to see the situation behind our border changed. I want to see changes everywhere where God's kingdom is coming. And I know that to see that, I need to see the cross as a place of victory and realize that through my weakness, His power is going to be made perfect. And when I'm going to be obedient, then He will come through and He will do what only He can do. And let us think about this time of Easter, not as something sad. Yes, we can reflect on, on how much He has done for us and how big of a price he paid for us but if we don't see it as a victory we'll be constantly concentrating on the sin that is so strong that defeats but if we see him as victorious then we see ourselves as victorious as the ones who actually can see his power in our lives through our obedience and through our weakness